Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be focusing on question 3 and 4 on the January CXE Mathematics Pass Paper 2022. Alright, 3A, let's get right into it. The box below contains the names of five quadrilaterals, trapezium, rhombus, kite, square, and rectangle. And just for you to remember how they look, I'm just going to do a quick diagram. Alright, so that is my trapezium. My kite looks something like this. That's my kite, my rhombus. Normally they say it's a square push, pushed out of shape. The square, as you know, has all four equal sides and the rectangle opposite sides are equal. So it says, choose the name of one quadrilateral from the box that best completes each statement. Number one, a dash has no lines of symmetry and has rotational symmetry of order one. Now, no lines of symmetry means that when you cut it longitudinal, horizontal, or diagonal, it cannot overlap. Now, if you look carefully, there is only one figure up here that if you cut it, it will never overlap, no matter where you cut it. And that is my trapezium. Now, the order of rotational symmetry is how many times it overlaps on itself while you spin it through 360 degrees. Now, clearly, this will only overlap when it goes back. So, right away, we know that this is the trapezium. Right, this is a bit pale, so I'm going to write with a red. Now, a dash has exactly two lines of symmetry and four right angles. These are very important properties to know. Now, we're going to think in between the square and the rectangle. We can cut the rectangle that way. That way, there's no other way to cut it. The square can be cut in so many different ways. And therefore, with four right angles and two lines of symmetry, that can only be the rectangle. All right, a dash has one line of symmetry, but no rotational symmetry. Now, this can't be true. It must have at least one. So I'm going to think of it as being one rotational symmetry so of course we're looking for the object with one line of symmetry clearly we rule out the rectangle we rule out the square if you look at the rhombus it has more than one so clearly it comes down to the kite that can only be cut this way so right away we can see it's a kite now for questions like these you have to have an idea of what the image look like if you don't please sketch it it get you through it very quickly now question b the diagram below shows four straight lines, two of which are parallel. Now, that is very important. Once you see this kind of question and talking about parallel lines, there are certain things that must come to your mind. Corresponding angles, alternate angles, vertically opposite angles. Now, part one asks me to determine the value of Q and R. All right, here's where Q is. Now, because these two lines are parallel, there are certain angles that are formed. And one of the very most common type of angle is what is called alternate angle. Now, how do I determine alternate angle? We simply look for the Z. Alright, that's the easy way to remember it. Always look for the Z and you can't go wrong. Now, I want angle Q. Alright, I'd said P initially, but it's angle Q that I want. Now, if I want angle Q, there are several ways to go about doing this. Alright. Now, if I'm using the same, I can even use the concept of alternate angles to do this. All right, here's an alternate angle right here. If you come here, you see a Z going that direction as well. All right, I have probably too many colors right here. Let me rub this out. Let me use the green. This is a perfect example of alternate angles. So if I can determine this angle right here, call it theta then you can see the alternate angle right here because you can see the Z inside the Z here, right here and here would be equal. Now, right here you have two angles at a point. Now, angles at a point on a straight line add up to give you 180 degrees. So this angle right here, which is theta, is going to be 180 minus 54 degrees, which is going to give me 126 degrees. Now, if this is 126, the other part on the Z, as you can see right here, would also be 126 degrees. So Q is equal to 126 degrees. Now, angle R. Look at where R is. R is at a point where you have an X being formed. Now, these angles are what we call vertically opposite angles. So to remember this now, you can think of the Jamaica flag. The angles on the opposite sides will naturally be equal. 
So R would be 54 degrees. All right, that's one way to remember it. Now let's go to the next page and see what it's asking. Give a geometric reason why angle P is equal to 71 degrees. Let's come back. Here's angle P and here you go guys. This is your perfect Z. So angle P is alternate to 71 degrees and therefore they are equal. All right, so let's go back. Now angle P forms an alternate angle. Just remember the Z angle, that's the easy way to remember. Alternate angle with 71 degrees. And that's a simple reason why it's equal. All right, let's go down. And we're going down to what we call transformational geometry. Now, this one says, the diagram below shows triangle X prime, Y prime, Z prime, and the X double prime, Y double prime, Z double prime, drawn in a grid. Now, if you notice, I have my ruler on the page already. It says triangle X prime, Y prime is the image of triangle X, Y, Z after an enlargement of scale factor 2 with a center 5, 1. Okay, first thing I need to put in is the center of enlargement. Good. Now, how does enlargement work? Enlargement work by what we call the scale factor. So, simply put, normally, if the center of enlargement is the origin, we simply multiply each coordinate by the scale factor to get the image. Of course, if we're doing it the opposite way, if we have the image and we want to go back to the object, we could easily divide it each point by the scale factor but however the center is not the origin the center is 5 1 but there's still a very simple concept that allows it to work since the scale factor is 2 which suggests double the image is twice as far from the object as the, from the center as the object is let me go again the image is twice as far from the center as the object is all right so technically speaking since the the center is 5 1 what it means is that if i can find if i can take each point distance from the center and i can find halfway i can find the object similarly if it was if the scale factor was 3 the image would be three times away as far from the center of enlargement as the object would be all right so let's go all right now you can see from from the center to point y prime this distance right here is 7.8 centimeters all right so what i need to find is half of 7.8 centimeters which would be 3.9 so it would be right here i'm gonna put y prime there okay now i'm gonna rotate my ruler right here let me rotate it. So I'm going to click on my ruler from the same and I'm going to take the distance of Z prime. Now the distance of Z prime, if I'm looking carefully here, it looks to be approximately, this is about 7.4, 7.4. So what I'm going to have to do is that I'm gonna to have to half 7.4 and if you want you don't want to go wrong you can always go to your calculator all right divide 7.4 by 2 you're gonna get 3.7 so that point is approximately 3.7 and let me make sure that everything is lined up here so that's 3.7 so it's gonna be right here we're gonna call this Z all right, I shall call this Y because it is an object, right? So let me rub this out. It should have been called Y. So I have Y there. Now my final point, which is X prime, I'm just gonna move the ruler up so I can get the distance right here. This distance looks like about, um, about nine. So I'm gonna go for 4.5, which is gonna take me right here. All right, good. 
Now I have no more use for my ruler, so let me take that out. All right, so let me tidy this up so you can see it perfectly. Let me tidy it up. Right here, I have Y. And right here, I have X. And all I have to do now is simply connect these points. So let me go right ahead, connect this to this, connect this to this, and I'm gonna connect this point down here. There is my object that I enlarge. See how straightforward? Not bad at all. Now, there we have it. It says draw a triangle X, Y, Z, object of triangle X prime, Y prime on the grid. And there we have it, right there on the grid. Now, the second question says triangle X prime, Y prime, Z prime is mapped on the triangle X double prime, Y double prime, Z double prime by a reflection in the line P. State the equation of a line P. Now, line P is going to be halfway between these two. All right, so all we need to do is count, find, find a point and count how far the other one is. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six. Halfway between, well, half of six is three. So you're going to have one, two, three. So this would be your line of reflection. So you draw it down, that's your mirror line. Now, the mirror line, if you bend the graph paper and the mirror line, these two would overlap. So it has to be equidistant. Both of them are equidistant from the mirror line. Now notice that the mirror line passes through the x-axis at 2. So at that point, x is equal to 2. And that is how you get the equation of your mirror line. x is equal to 2. All right, let me take this down and see if I have any more questions down here. No, I don't. So I'm going to go to my next page, which takes me into functions. Now, three functions, f, g, h, r, define as follows. f of x equal 2x minus 1, g of x is equal to 3x plus 2, and h of x is equal to 5 to the x. Let me write that properly so you can see it. Find a value of f of a half. So I'm going to go to the f function, all right? And this is straightforward. You go to the f function, where you see the x, you simply put a bracket there. What goes in the bracket? A half will go in there and you put back the minus one. Now two halves give me one whole. You can put this into your calculator if you want. So I'm gonna have one minus one, which is equal to zero. The second one is h of zero. And you go back for the h function, five to the x. Now where you have that x, you're gonna be putting a zero. So it's gonna be five to the zero. Now in maths, anything we raise to zero gives me one, apart from zero itself, right? And we don't need to go into that aspect of it. All right, here we are at g square of minus three. Don't be confused by this. This just means g of g of minus three. So technically, you're gonna find g of minus three. The answer you get, you put it right back into your g function. Now let me just write the g of x function down here. This is three x plus two. All right, let me scroll down. So the first thing I need to find is g of negative 3. All right, this color is very pale. So where you have x in the g function, you're going to be putting negative 3. So you're going to have 3, open bracket, negative 3 plus 2. This is going to give me negative 9 plus 2, which is equal to negative 7. Now, since I've found this part, which is g of negative 3, I'm now going to replace that by negative 7. So I want g of negative 7. So this is going to be 3 times negative 7 plus 2, which is negative 21 plus 2, which is equal to negative 19. Now, don't write below this line, but I'm just going to write the answer there. Therefore, g of g of minus 3 is equal to negative 19. Let's take it down now. Question B. g of f of x. Now, what does that mean? It means you find f of x and you plug it into the g function. So you're gonna to want to write the g function first. So what do I do? I'm gonna write the g function. In the place of x, I put a bracket and I put a plus two. Now let's go back up and see what the f function look like. Let's scroll back up. It was two x minus one. So you're gonna come back down. 
in that bracket, you're going to put 2x minus 1. Now, all we have to do is expand and simplify. So, 3 times negative 2x, oh, sorry, 3 times positive 2x is 6x. 3 times negative 1, negative 3 plus 2. Now, remember, we don't want right below this line, right? So, it's going to be 6x negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. And see how easy you get two marks? All right, let's go to the next page. G inverse of x. All right, let's go back for g of x. g of x is equal to 3x plus 2. All right, so g of x is equal to 3x plus 2. Now, inverse normally has a procedure that will follow, so you can't go wrong. You're going to say let g of x equal to y. So y is equal to 3x plus 2. Now you interchange x and y. Alright, so you interchange x and y. So you have x equal 3y plus 2. Because the whole idea of the inverse is that you're going from the function back. Are you going from your codomain back to your domain? Are you range back to your domain? So now we carry out the procedure to find y. Now, if I want y, the first thing I need to get rid of is a 2. So I'm going to have x minus 2 equal to 3y. I need to get rid of 3, which is multiplying y, so we divide both sides by 3. So y is equal to x minus 2 over 3. So therefore, g inverse of x is equal to x minus 2 upon 3. All right, so good so far. All right, let's scroll up a bit. Hence or otherwise, determine the value of x when g inverse of x is equal to 4. Okay. What I can do, I'm going to give you two methods. I'm going to invert, equate the inverse function because inverse function equal to 4. All right? So x minus 2 upon 3 equal to 4. I need x, so I'm going to get rid of 3 first. I multiply both sides by 3. This goes x minus 2 is equal to 12. Since I want to get rid of the minus 2, I'm going to add it, so I'm going to have 12 plus 2. So x is equal to 14. All right, good. But guess what? What if they did not ask you to find the inverse function? Did you know that you can simply take the 4 and plug it into the regular function, which is 3x plus 4? 3x plus 2, why? Because bear in mind that the inverse reverses the process of the function. So by plugging in 4 into the function, it will actually give me the value of x for which g inverse of x is equal to 4. So I simply just find g of 4. g of 4 would simply be equal to 3 times 4 plus 2, which is equal to 12 plus 2, which is equal to 14. So technically, they don't have to ask you to find the inverse function before they ask you to find the value of x for which g inverse of x is equal to 4. What we simply do, once they ask you that, is to plug the 4 in the original function, seeing that the inverse reverses the process. Alright, very important concept to understand. 